Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, this session is MOSFET Parasitics and Technology Scaling. We will discuss what are the different parasitic capacitors that are uh, formed in case of a MOSFET. We will also discuss what are the different scaling methods. Before this, you need to watch some videos which I have already created for some other subjects that is N-type uh, MOSFET I mean working of N-type MOSFET, working of P-type MOSFET. As far as MOSFETs are concerned, there are two major types. One is enhancement type and another is depletion type MOSFET. Again, there are uh, some uh, subtypes like P uh, MOSFET and N MOSFET. Just like I have told you, already I have made other subjects for other subjects. I will provide the link of those videos in the description box. Please do watch the, those videos because this entire chapter is based on the MOSFET. Now, let us start with MOSFET parasitics. This, this topic indicates what are the different parasitic capacitors that are created while, uh, while manufacturing the MOSFET. Actually, in very simplified language, Capacitor is a device, if, if I am talking about a parallel plate capacitor, so in case of a parallel ca plate capacitor, there are two plates, in between two plates, dielectric medium is there, the structure acts as a capacitor. So, make the thing simple, in case of a MOSFET, we are not artificially creating the capacitor, but due to the structure of a MOSFET, different capacitors are created, which causes the effect on the uh, different characteristics on the performance of the MOSFET. So this comes under the MOSFET parasitics. This is the model which is the uh, parasitic capacitance model for a MOSFET. We know that in case of a MOSFET there are three major terminals. One is S that is source terminal, G represents gate terminal, D represents drain terminal. This portion is the source terminal part. This is the drain terminal part. Now this particular portion, this I am talking about, this represents the channel. So channel is created between source and drain. This lower portion indicates the substrate which is also called the bulk. Now different capacitors are created in case of this MOSFET. Just like I told you, this structure MOSFET is created, some capacitors are created which are called parasitic capacitors. So six capacitors are shown in this diagram. First is C1, that means this capacitor. It is overlap capacitance between G and S. That means it is the overlap capacitor between gate and source terminal. As I said, ye, this particular portion, this portion is related to source. This is the source terminal. This part is related to source. This is the gate terminal. So between gate and source, C1 capacitor is created. That is overlap capacitance between G and S, gate and source. Same way C2 is the overlap capacitor which is created between gate and drain terminal. Just like source terminal, this portion is related to gate terminal, uh, drain terminal. This is the drain terminal. This is the uh, drain region. So C2 is the overlap capacitor which is created between gate and the drain terminal. Next is C3. Look at the diagram. C3 is gate to channel capacitance. As I said, this portion represents the gate. Between source and uh, drain, some channel is created. So, gate to channel, the capacitor C3 indicates the parasitic capacitance. C4 is source to substrate junction capacitance. This capacitor, this is the portion of source. So, this is the part of the substrate. So, between source and substrate, there is a capacitor C4 which is the junction capacitance between source and substrate. Same way C5 is the junction capacitance between drain and substrate. C6, if I am talking about the sixth capacitor, this capacitor is the capacitor between channel and the substrate because this portion is related to channel. So this is about the different parasitic capacitors which are there, which are existing in case of a MOSFET. As I said, these capacitors affects the performance of the MOSFET. Now, uh, first type, if I am talking about broad types of such capacitors, first type is overlap capacitor. That, that's what we discussed. C1 and C2 represents overlap capacitor, this and this capacitor. So, in case of a MOSFET, I have drawn another diagram. Actually, 
this is the source terminal this is the uh, drain region this is source region this is drain region the source and drain region should exactly end at this point because this portion is related to gate uh, portion gate terminal portion but certain part is getting extended into the gate region similarly from drain region again certain part is getting extended into the drain region let us say this extended length is denoted by ld this is also a length which is represented by ld so actual length of the gate channel is l because of this extended portion the gate channel length gets reduced which is represented by value l effective in this diagram this notation l represents length of a channel w represents width of a channel so overlap capacitance are denoted by c g s o o stands for overlap g s between means the capacitance between gate and source then c g d o again o stands for overlap g d means gate to drain capacitance the formula is very simple c o x that is now COX represents oxide layer capacitance, LD, LD is this extended length into W, W is the width. Similarly, uh, for CGDO, the equation is COX, oxide capacitance, LD, length and W, width. Second type is get to channel capacitance. So, the look at this diagram, the channel region, this region is connected to source, drain as well as substrate. So, this represents the gate to channel capacitance because channel is related, uh, channel is connected to the three parts, source, drain and the substrate part. So this gives the capacitance CGS that is gate to source capacitance CGD gate to drain capacitance CGB gate to substrate, substrate is also called bulk. So CGB is gate to bulk uh, terminal uh, capacitance. Again, we have to uh, consider three regions see in case of working of MOSFET uh, broadly there are three regions first is cutoff condition whenever there is no conducting channel exists so that that represents the cutoff condition in that case CGS and CGD are zero while CGB is given by COX into W into L second is linear mode in this case there is an inverted channel between so drain and source. So existence of inverting channel is there between drain and source terminal and important condition is VD that is a drain voltage. This voltage is greater than VS source voltage. In this case CGB is zero. CGB is the capacitance between gate and bulk that is substrate is zero. CGS and CGD are in parallel and approximately this value is one half COX into WL. Third is the saturation region. In case of saturation region, a uh, particular uh, phenomena is there which is called a pinch up condition. So this is this also represents the pinch up region. In this region, CGD and CGB are zero, whereas CGS is two by three COX into WL. Third broad type of uh, parasitic capacitance is junction capacitance which are also called diffusion capacitance so these capacitors are created due to reverse bias source body and drain body pn junction so make it simple this capacitance junction capacitance or diffusion capacitance represents the pn junctions uh, which are related to reverse bias source body and drain body these capacitance Particularly, this junction capacitance is non-linear and decreases if reverse bias is increased. So, this is about the MOSFET parasitic capacitors. Next part is technology scaling. The meaning of word scaling is, suppose we are using MOSFET transistors and we want to accommodate a large number of transistors in a single IC package. In that case, scaling technology is used. In very simplified language, you need to reduce down the dimensions by applying certain criteria so that you can place maximum number of uh, devices. That is the meaning of scaling. But when performing the scaling, care should be taken that the characteristics 
after scaling should not get affected so many times it is required to change the uh, fabrication technology or use the proper fabri fabrication technology or it is also required uh, to change the bias voltage and so on so there are two types of uh, technology scalings first is constant field scaling in this case the dimensions of the transistor the device voltage and doping concentration densities are changed this downward arrow indicates reduced are reduced by scaling factor s s is some constant value which is greater than 1 so we want to make changes in the dimensions by factor s second type of scaling is constant voltage scaling as the name indicates in this case, the supply voltage is kept constant. It is not scaled down and the process is scaled. So this is the list of parameters. Uh, first is channel length. The general notation of channel length is L. After scaling, it becomes L by S. That means it is reduced by factor S. Width W by S. Again, width is reduced by factor S. Then gate oxide thickness. The Original notation is TOX, gate oxide thickness. It is divided by S, that means it is reduced by factor S. Gate oxide capacitance is S into COX. Then drain current. Now, see, so, some part I have read in the ink. So, these parameters are channel length, gate, gate oxide thickness, then gate oxide capacitance. These are same for both the technologies. Well, as a drain current in first, that is constant field technology, is reduced by amount S. So it is ID by S. In constant voltage technology, it is S into ID. Then threshold voltage for constant field, it is VT by S. For uh, constant voltage, the threshold voltage is not changed. It is kept constant. Then supply voltage, VDD by S in case of constant field uh, technology, whereas this remains VDD in case of constant voltage technology. Then gate source voltage, again same logic, VGS by S and it remains VGS in constant voltage uh, technology. Make the thing simple. What we have written in constant voltage, the voltage, supply voltage remains constant. So all these threshold voltage, supply, uh, power supply voltage and gate source voltage are maintained constant in case of second scaling technology that is constant voltage technology. Then channel resistance in case of constant field technology, it remains as it is, it is not changed. Whereas in constant voltage technology, it is RON upon S. That means it is reduced by factor S. Then power dissipation in case of constant field, it is P by S square. Whereas it is S into P. This is S that is scaling factor into P in case of constant voltage technology. So this is about the two major types of technologies that this chart shows how the uh, dimensions are changed, varied by performing the scaling. Now let us discuss advantages and disadvantages or limitations of this uh, technology scaling. So advantages are the capacitance is reduced due to the decreased dimensions. Second, improved current driving capability due to uh, a reduction in the dimensions as well as it increases the device characteristics. Then this upward arrow indicates improvement in the values, downward arrow indicates a decrement in the values. Then RC delay decreases, integration density increases naturally because we are accommodating more devices in a single chip. Then enhances speed, cost of the chip gets reduced. Disadvantages or limitations, power consumption per unit area increases, then gain of a device decreases due to reduction in the carrier mobility. Third, current handling capacity reduces. Then packaging density is increased and device temperature is increased. See, whenever device temperature is increased, that means that particular IC is getting hot, temperature is getting increased. So it, many times it is required to apply certain cooling methods. Then oxide layer may lose its dielectric property so many times it is required it may be required to change the particular oxide layer and there is an improvement in the noise so these are the advantages and limitations of the technology scaling so dear students that's it for today's session so thank you thanks a lot for watching this video